Now, let's make our way to our cartoon. In this picture you can see that the first step is to pull in the air from the atmosphere. It is performed the initial cleanup when the air passes through the inlet filters, which is represented here. The air goes to the main air compressor, which squeezes the molecules together to raise the pressure. Step 4 is another step of cleanup, where water and CO2 are removed. After the air has been compressed and cleaned up, it goes to the heat exchange, and then goes into the distillation system, where the nitrogen molecules end up at the top of the column. Argon molecules end up in the middle, and the oxygen molecules end up at the bottom of the column. The distribution of the products can be done by a pipeline into cylinders or into trucks. So, let's go one step further and look at our simplified PFD, or one-page process flow diagram. We are going to walk through the path of the molecules, so you can get the overview and then, we will look at each particular piece of equipment more in detail. We actually start down here, this is the symbol for the inlet air filter, so this is the first step and is where the molecules enter to the plant. The air progresses through the main inlet air filter, and through the main compressor. The main air compressor raises the pressure of the gas and also makes it hot, so we need to compensate for that, and cool the air back down. We can do that, with a variety of different after coolers. In some plants is also used a sort of refrigeration system in addition to that. So we have at least one or two stations of cooling after the main air compressor. After done that, then we go through the separator vessel, where the liquid water is taken out of the system. Once we remove liquid water, then we go to the front end adsorber system. This can be a temperature swing or pressure swing style, and is designed to remove the CO2 and the water vapor. Now we have clean dry air, the air is going to move into the main heat exchanger, most of the air flows through the main exchanger and is cold down to nearest its dew point, when is almost to starch condensing, and then, becomes to feed the high pressure column. Now, the molecules start to have some choices. The high pressure column produces nitrogen at the top, and a stream called crude LOX or crude liquid oxygen, at the bottom. In some configurations, when is needed a high pressure nitrogen product, we can pull that, straight off from the high pressure column so there is maybe a product stream coming out from the hp column and then going through the main exchanger to make gaseous nitrogen to be delivered to the customer the crude lox which is coming from the bottom of the column is subcooled and becomes to feed the low pressure column crude lox is a stream that has about 40 percent of oxygen that is a good rule of thumb for the composition of crude locks. Going back to the top of the high pressure column, if the gases are not pulled off as a product, are going to be condensed in the reboiler condenser to form a stream that is called reflux. Reflux is just the term used for liquid that runs down that column. So we condense our gaseous nitrogen and form reflux, which some feed into the high pressure column and the rest feeds at the top of the low pressure column. So, so far we have taken the air. We have made it into a mix of pure nitrogen at one end and crude locks at the other end of that column. Per column, the rest of the distillation will take place. Again, we will end up with nitrogen at the top of the column. If the plant has LP GAN, it means low pressure gaseous nitrogen stream that will come off at the top of the column. If we are making oxygen, it will come off at the bottom of the LP column. 